The crew down Maya have a tight schedule to meet on launch days, and today was no different. The day's campaign began early this morning at around T minus 12 hours, as launch technicians rolled Electron out of the vehicle facility down to the pad before the strong back lifted the vehicle to a vertical position for launch. Approximately five hours before T0, we begin fueling Electron with a highly refined kerosene, and then at T minus three hours, we fill the vehicle with roughly 9,000 kilograms of liquid oxygen. Throughout this time, our team at Range Control are monitoring minute-by-minute minute weather conditions, including the ever-present threat of upper-level winds as we count down to T0. At about T minus 18 minutes, our launch director conducts a go-no-go no go poll with the operators to confirm that Electron is ready for flight. This includes a check that all of the rocket systems are good to go and that the weather is clear for liftoff. At T minus 2 minutes, Electron's auto sequence begins and the flight computers take over the launch countdown. After T0 ignition, it takes about two seconds for the Rutherford engines to lift Electron off the pad. A little over a minute into flight, approaching an altitude of 12 kilometers, Electron will pass through maximum aerodynamic pressure, or max-Q. This is the point in flight where the forces on the vehicle are at their strongest. You'll hear the call for max-Q from our guidance and navigation team and mission control, but if you watch carefully, you might actually catch a glimpse of its transit. Shortly before the moment of max-Q, while the vehicle is transonic, a cloud of condensation known as a vapor cone will form around Electron. This cloud is a physical effect of the vehicle. Vehicle traveling so fast, around 1500 kilometers per hour, that the moisture in the air surrounding Electron condenses and creates a vapor cone. Two and a half minutes into flight, all nine Rutherford engines on Electron's first stage will shut down and the booster will separate. At this point, the first stage will begin its ascent back to Earth, a journey that will be monitoring closely in line with our recovery efforts. After stage one step, the vacuum optimized Rutherford engine on the second stage will ignite, propelling the kick stage and the payload into orbit. Fairing separation will occur, will occur shortly after stage two ignition. Nine minutes after liftoff, Electron will be orbital and the second stage engine will shut down in the lead up to kick stage the kick stage then relaxes into an elliptical parking orbit around the Earth before lighting its Curie engine 52 minutes into the mission and then moves into position for payload deployment. Today's webcast will conclude shortly after kick stage separation, so there won't be footage of this payload deployment. So now you know what to expect from today's mission, and with just three minutes left in the, before the liftoff, let's hand it over to Mission Control to hear the final count. And all stations, flight on mission code from now on, there should be no red flags in your LCCs. And I can confirm vehicle is now green, ready for flight. PMS flight on mission. Go ahead. Please confirm flight computer as goes green. Confirmed. PMS please lock auto sequence and confirm. Auto sequence is locked. Copy that and all stations be advised, we are currently go for auto sequence at T minus two minutes, commencing in 30 seconds. Okay, avionics, flight on mission court. Avionics. Please confirm all AV bats have been switched to internal power. Confirmed all AV bats are in internal power. And confirm stage power is disabled on all three stages. Confirmed external power for all three stages is disabled. All stages be uh, all stations be advised. Recirc. Recirking. Pressing Kero. I didn't touch something, it was actually cut mission. out. Copy. Please disable anti-geysering and confirm. All anti-geysering disabled. Stage 1 flight mission. 
Stage one. Confirm stage one is pressed. Confirmed. Stage two flight mission, send you. Stage two is pressed. Thank you. High flow engine purge active. Enabling deluge. Deluge running. Seating GNC states. Re readying engines. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, ignition, three, two, one. And we're off the pad. We are T plus 35 seconds into flight for the 11th Electron mission. In approximately 30 seconds, the rocket will reach the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure on its way to space. So let's listen in for the call from Mission Control. High voltage battery discharge nominal. Electron is supersonic. Approaching max Q. Cleared max Q. An electron has cleared max Q. Next up is a series of mission milestones which occur in quick succession. Coming up first is main engine cutoff or MECO followed shortly by the booster's separation from the rest of the vehicle. When this happens, we'll cut to a view of the booster's ascent to Earth as Stage 2 continues onwards. First, let's check back in for Miko and stage separation. Speed is 1 km per second, altitude is 26 km. AOS at Chatham Station. Stage one propulsion remains nominal. Electrons Rutherford engines are continuing nominally on the way to orbit. Our speed is currently 4,800 kilometers per hour and our altitude is 45 kilometers as we approach main engine cutoff. Twenty seconds remaining. So they will try and have that engine come down in a controlled manner. They expect that they will lose telemetry and video cameras about 30 miles up, but it's cool that they are trying. So the good Stage folks one, at Rocket Mika. Labs are aiming for reusable. Stage one. Cut out, and we. So those audio cutouts are on the fearing. rocket lab side. Fearing has separated, clearing the way for Stage payload deployment. Moment killer, it does sound like Discord audio. Eight seconds into flight, an electron. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on, but at least we get subtitles periodically. 
So what's going on now is they are continuing burn of their second stage engine and will be- We're lucky to see some fantastic views of Earth from up here in space as Electron's second stage Rutherford engine continues to propel its payload to orbit. Hello, Eric. Welcome. Stage two guidance is nominal. A quick update from Mission Control. If you're just joining us, we've had a successful liftoff of the Birds of a Feather mission for the NRO. We saw a clean separation and ignition. Currently 11,600 kilometers per hour and our altitude, altitude is 180 kilometers, kilometers speed at 5 minutes and 6 seconds in the flight. Per second. This is the battery hot swap. Electrons back Batteries are nearing depletion, and in order to continue on the journey to space, we need to swap over to a fresh power source. So let's wait for the call from Mission Control. So the way their engine works is they have an electric-powered fuel pump that is driving the engine mechanics. And the engine is simply burning the bejesus out of the liquid oxygen mixture. Um, this is a completely novel design. Um, so it uses LOX and RP. FDS has saved. This is also a As you've just heard, we've had successful battery hot swap. Electron continues to look nominal as we hit six minutes and 36 seconds into this mission. Propulsion is still holding nominal. So this is just a cool system. Two minutes remaining. By using the batteries, they're able to keep their system simplified, keep the weight down. They're not losing any energy to anything other than lift. Well, they eject the batteries. But uh, it's just a cool little system. Now what I'm waiting for is an update. All systems are nominal and Electron looks healthy. We're currently seven minutes into this mission as we look ahead to second engine cutoff in approximately a minute and a half. So what I'm looking 90 for- 90 seconds remaining is an update on that stage one, which I think is the set of images on the left, which is supposed to be a controlled descent. <laughs> Uncle Bill, I'm not sure I want to live My voltage in a battery world discharge holding nominal. Where things keep ejecting batteries. Now, they did expect to lose telemetry and video from that stage one, about 30 miles up. I don't know. Coming up next is stage happened. two engine cutoff and kick stage separation. 50 At this point, we'll mark the end of the vehicle video feeds from this mission. So let's listen in for the call. Thank you, Lowdown Fool. I'm, I'm glad that you really enjoy our channel. Um, so we work to bring you all sorts of different live events as well as daily news. Entering stage two burnout detect mode. So that orange, red, black, that is the temperature gradient where the yellow is the hottest, the red is cooler, the black is the coolest, and we're actually seeing the cone Ten of the engine. Remaining. They're struggling. Seek confirmed. It's amazing how fast it radiated away all its heat. 
that chain And that confirms power. Electron's second stage engine has shut down as planned. The kick stage and the second stage will now separate for the final push to payload deployment. And everyone is now watching to make sure it deploys. Very good kick stage orbit. And there you have it. Kick stage separation has been confirmed. Approximately an hour from now, the kick stage will deploy the payload to orbit, marking the completion of today's mission. Stay tuned to our social media channels for confirmation of payload deployment. But before we close out today's webcast, a final thank you to the NRO for selecting Rocket Lab as your mission partner. It's been an honor to fly you on board our 11th Electron mission and our first launch of 2020. We've got plenty more to look forward to this year, including our upcoming first launch from US soil in Virginia and our big move to our new headquarters in Long Beach, California. Don't forget, we're always on the lookout for fresh talent here at Rocket Lab. If you or someone you know would like more information on the roles that we're currently recruiting for, head to rocketlabusa.com. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you again here soon. I'm Max Muncy. This is Rocket Lab Mission Control signing off. And that's all she wrote, folks. It was a nice, simple, straightforward launch of a nice, simple, straightforward rocket. And um, well, you know, if you're fresh talent, by applying. Rocket Lab has two sets of offices, one down in New Zealand, and the other is uh, Wallops Island outside of DC, which I think is in Virginia, but it could be Maryland. It's one of those two. Uh, so if you want to live in the Beltway or you have fantasies of going down under, Rocket Lab may be the place to go. So check it out. And I think that concludes our coverage of the launch of this very huggable, cute little electron rocket. One of my favorite little details that I didn't have a chance to point out due to all my technological problems. Thank you so much for your patience while I figured out what it was that was causing the audio to be 25% of normal. Um, it, it's a rocket that is uh, largely 3D printed. It is entirely black. And the reason that it has those white segments right before launch is that's frost built up on the outside of the rocket as they have filled it with liquid oxygen. So yeah, heck yeah, launch went. And you know, sometimes that's all we can ask for is for the launch to go. Now, this has been a production of CosmoQuest. We are part of the Planetary Science Institute, a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to exploring our solar system and beyond. We are here to put science in your brains. Want more science? Give us a follow. Follows are entirely free, and we'll let you know when we're going live with our Monday through Friday daily space episodes at 1 p.m. Eastern uh, when we're coming live with space events like this one, launches, landings, and lots of stuff in between. So my name is Dr. Pamela Gay, and thank you for the bits. All my dogs are asleep. Crap, I just woke them up and the Cheerios are on the other side of the room. I am going to actually raid my own channel. So this is what I do for my day job, but in the evenings over on the Star Strider channel, I read stories. So if you want to join me for the reading of a science fiction story, I'm going to awkwardly try and raid my own channel. So stay tuned. We're going to head on over to Storytime and the 1668 classic Blazing Worlds by Margaret Cavendish. I have no clue how well this is going to go. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see.